so in this video I want to quickly walk through the new shielded VM functionality and the host guardian service essentially the shielded VM functionality is designed to help us protect virtual machines even from the virtualization administrators those fabric administrators the storage admins the backup admins in the past if I was one of those administrators no matter what security I put on the VM ultimately I could get the virtual hard disk and I could look at it even if I encrypted a VHD if I'm a fabric administrator I can get to the memory of the host and through various means I could grab the keys and still get the content and so what shielded VM gives us is the ability to protect even from a fabric administrator the keys are not just in regular memory they're in a special locked vault of the memory that even the OS kernel can't get to directly to really give us this security now to enable this we need a host guardian server this actually runs the host guardian service and there's two roles there there's an attestation service which checks the health of the Hyper-V host which is kind of a guarded host and that attestation can be based just on is it a member of an AD group which really isn't that great but if I don't have TPMs in my hardware that's kind of the best I can do but ideally we want to do TPM attestation Using the TPM attestation, we can ensure the integrity of the entire boot process. There's no processes running that haven't been whitelisted. So we know nothing has messed with that host that could then interfere with trying to grab or do some malicious activity to get access to these virtual machines. Now that host guardian service should actually be running on a server core instant, which is what I have here. And essentially you go through, you enable the role. I then actually install the HGS feature on the box and as part of that it actually creates its own forest again I want to be able to protect this even from the Active Directory administrator so it runs in its own forest now in this demo I'm running it as a VM in the real world you wouldn't want to do that I want isolation separation of duty so this HGS server would actually run as a physical host and what it would actually be is three physical hosts in their own cluster. So I have high availability for the service. I could lock those away in a separate cage. So complete isolation. And what this server does is this is going to actually store those private keys that are going to enable us to decrypt the virtual TPM of the VMs and then get access to start the VMs. But again, through that secure lockbox on those guarded hosts. So even the administrators couldn't get to that. In this example, I deployed it using self-signed certificates. Again, this is just a lab. In reality, you wouldn't do this. You would actually want to deploy these using a trusted PKI. I then initialize with a name for my host guardian service. Now I could run it in the trust TPM attestation mode, which requires all of the guarded hosts have TPMs, or I could do trust AD. And in my environment, I actually switched to using Active Directory. When I do that, there's a couple of things I have to have. I need to trust my main Active Directory domain. So I'm going to create an AD group. You can see over here. In that group, I'm going to put the hosts that I consider guarded. I'm trusting they're well managed. Nothing bad is happening to them. So I have to trust that. Now, in addition, I then have to be able to do DNS resolution. So I'm adding a forwarder zone for my primary domain to my new forest just for HGS and likewise I actually set a conditional forwarder going the other way so that I can resolve my HGS services so I can do DNS resolution both ways because I have to be able to get to my HGS from my guarded host to get things like the policy and do the attestation checks so I then create the trust so that my HGS forest trusts my primary domain. I'm going to get the AD group locally to find out the SID of that group. And then I add that as an attestation host group. Now if I was using TPM attestation on the actual guarded host, I would initialize the TPM, I would output out the configuration, and then actually copy that file that it generates to my HDS box and import it. I create a code integrity policy. 
I then convert that to a file and import that into my HGS server. And this is all documented step by step. If you search for shielded VMs, Microsoft has a fantastic step by step document that goes through all of this. If I'm using TPMs, I create a TPM based policy for each of my types of hardware and I copy that to my TPM server. I then download a script and I run that on each of my hosts. And at this point, I'm ready. I have my HGS server set up. It's ready to actually start being used by the various servers. So what I do here is on my actual host, I set it up to use that host guardian service. So there's the service name for the attestation and for the key protection. It does two services, the attestation and then actually gives out the keys once it's proved that host is healthy enough to get the keys, it's allowed to get them. I can run some verification of the health and check I can actually do that attestation. If I jump over to my host, I can see, for example, I could get my config. And you can see I've passed. I'm using Active Directory. I'm kind of good to go. Now, I need to get information about my Guardian service because I have to be able to request a key. Because what I have right now is I have a VM and it's running. And if I, actually, I'll shut this down. Now, you have to ensure I can RDP to this thing. Because once I turn on guarded, I can't do VM connect. I can't do PowerShell direct. All of that stuff will be blocked. So I can connect that right now. If I do my settings for security, I see it's got secure boot, but I don't have any TPM type information at this point. So what I want to do now is make it guarded. So I've already run these bits of code. This basically downloaded the metadata for my HGS service from my HGS server. I then got information about the owner. And now I want to create a new key protector. This is going to go and grab this from my HGS and then save it. Now I've got my VM name. I'm going to set it with the key protector. I'm going to set it to now be shielded as true. I'm going to enable its virtual TPM. And now if I go look at this virtual machine again, and let's refresh this. Now I see it's shielded. It's got the TPM. It's got the encrypted state. It's enabling shielding. So all of its live migration traffic, the VM worker process will encrypt everything it does. It has the virtual TPM. I've now got shielding running on this virtual machine. So now it's going to block certain human interface devices. It's going to block me using VM Connect. It's going to block PowerShell Direct. All of those things that maybe will be a way around trying to get to this. So it's now protected. So I can now start this virtual machine. Now if I double click on it, you cannot connect. It's shielded. Use remote desktop, i.e. stop trying to go in round the networking stack and do it the right way. PowerShell Direct would give me the similar error. So I can't get to it that way anymore. It's now shielded. And that's really what I need to do. Now, again, read the Microsoft document. It goes into fantastic detail on all of this stuff. This is that document, Guarded Fabric Deployment Guide, and it goes through all the different scenarios. Now, I've enabled the shielded VM very, very simply. It's actually on the host already. Typically, you're going to have a hosting provider and you'll actually turn on this protection in a different environment. I can integrate this with VMM. I can integrate this with Windows Azure Pack. So I have different ways to leverage this technology. But essentially now, as a next step, I have this virtual machine. I would connect to the virtual machine. And inside that VM now, it will actually have a TPM. So notice I can still get to it using RDP. I just can't take these shortcut devices through the sort of hypervisor fabric. So it's now protected, but it's not bit lockered yet. So the next thing I would now do is I would go and turn that stuff on. I would go to my control panel. It has that virtual TPM. And now because I have that TPM, I can do the protection, I can do the bit locker protection in such a way that even the fabric admin would not be able to decrypt that. So I'd actually have to go and add the BitLocker to it. 
and then enable those pieces. So here I would go to BitLocker Drive Encryption, Install. So now I have BitLocker installed. I've gone to the Control Panel Applet. I can see if I go to TPM Administration, I have a TPM. It's ready for use. Because I've got that virtual TPM through the Hyper-V functionalities now, I can just turn on BitLocker. I've got bootable media. So let's actually remove that and we'll do that again. So it's rebooted. So I can save the recovery key to a file or print it somewhere. We use the new encryption. And just saying restart and then it's going to encrypt it. So once that's finished, once the encryption is completely finished, at that point, I'm fully secure with this VM. I could share it away to another guarded fabric, and I'm good to go. I hope this made sense. Just a quick introduction to the shielded VMs. Thank you.